of the highest degree is information that pertains to you. Information and pertinent information that will help you and sustain you upon this planet so that you can be comfortable. You have to understand that who will survive in this country is going to depend upon the information they have and where this information comes from and how this information applies to you. There are those that are into economics and they read the Wall Street Journal and they're able to see what is available and what's coming down and it helps them to move upon this planet or in the world, it helps them to make decisions. Well, see, as they understand who and what they're about and what sustains them, you must understand what you're about and what sustains you. And once, you, once a person gets what sustains them, they're able to relax and function under the worst circumstances as long as they don't see their foundation move from beneath their feet. And this is what it's about. It's about what we need, you understand? And as uh, 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 ex-slaves in this country, what information that totally pertains to us? If we didn't understand the vast knowledge that's written in the Bible, what would we really have? You know, after going to his schools, getting his degrees, and making an effort to function in this society. There can be many disappointments, but when you get what belongs to you, that's yours and yours alone, then you can stand and look eye to eye to anyone. But when you don't have what is yours, you, there are things you can share, but there are certain things in everybody's lives that is totally personal. And I know as, as an Israelite, this is that type of information because we were never instructed of our great heritage. And even what we gave in this country from the time of, of the inventions, that was pushed aside. It was as though we didn't do anything. And, and as history unfolded and, and things started coming out, it showed that every major strategic thing that this country is functioning on, we had a hand or we did it. And this is commendable. But what I'm interested is in, since uh, there was so many blocks to keep us from the history that belongs to us, there were also a block to keep us from hooking up and linking up the other history before we got into this country. And that history can't, comes through reading what they call the Bible. And it hooks up and showing that we were a great people coming where we came from off the continent of Africa, that when we came here and how they systematically broke us down, that even in such a... Uh, uh, um, uh, um, Indoctrination, we were able to be great inventors. And we, and it, history proves that when you look at the inventions that we gave to this country, it showed an ingenious, it showed a superior group of people that came that they say was ignorant, retarded, all these bywords. I mean, they had, if they, they spent more effort disproving us. Because if they didn't, we would have made the slave master the slave. You understand? We would have ran America. They saw the ingenious part of us. So that's why it was made so much effort to, do, to demoralize us by having us mate with our sisters, brothers, like we were cattle. They made us, like, believe that we were the stench of the earth. 
but we were the, really the cream and still is the cream of the earth. But this is information and it's not trying to degrade him. See, when you're a superior man, you don't have to go around telling everybody that the other guy is inferior. They find that out. If a man is good in math and you sit him down and put a problem and he's worked out, it automatically proves out. The, the ability of an individual to another individual is automatically proven in time. And we never came into America to disprove him. By him attempting to disprove our character and the type of people that we were, he disproved himself. He made himself into the reflection he did it, not us. See, this is why I say, Happy, O thou, O Israel, for who's like unto thee? For thou shalt find thy enemies, what? Liars. And the lie is his image. And in this image, he's being disgraced. Because we are standing in the gates of this country and we are, are, are being that we have been the victim and, that, and telling the atrocities that he has imposed upon a helpless people that if you look at the, 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 the data concerning of our inventions and what we gave, we gave it in love. If you look um, at the discoveries and, and, and how uh, the men were dealt with. We had a, a, uh, uh, an inventor. The man could not read. All he could was sign an X. And he made the coppola, which when the train's back, it hooks up. This ingenious man not being able to read, but this a X, this an X, it showed you that Yahweh took from the least of us to the greatest of us and made America function, knowing that the very capital, Banneke, with his photographic memory, was able to remember the blueprint and the layout. And this ingenious black man, slave, was able to construct from looking at blueprints that was taken away, he was able to rebuild what they call Washington, D.C. I mean, when we look at the, the, the greatness of our people, because Yahweh wanted to prove to us that you came into America not as a, a liability. You came into America with substance to give to a people that you were, that you had to serve. And Yahweh was not, as I continue to tell you, Yahweh was not going to beat them for slavery. Yahweh was going to beat them for the violence, the violence that he perpetrated against his brother Jacob. So once we get this information and line it up, we will survive. Those that will hear the information and do the information will survive. We cannot survive if we do not have the pertinent information that pertains to us and us alone. We must not worry about the world. The world will take care of itself, but once we begin to enact this information into our life, then we will become the beaconing light that all humanity will have something by which they can guide themselves. And this was what Israel and the law was all about. Yahweh raised Israel up so that they would be a light unto the Gentile nation. So when they took and overthrew us, but we overthrew ourselves by breaking the commandments. And when they took advantage of us uh, breaking the commandments and he fought the, the destruction um, by uh, uh, knowing our law, because many of them knew the law, and they knew that we weren't supposed to marry among the, the, the people. They knew we weren't supposed to eat pork. They knew our law. So to contaminate us, they would send among the strange women, and the men would marry them and get them to run after their philosophy 
and to worship their deities. And it was a strict law telling us, do not do that. So even to this day, they know who we are. They put more pork in our food. They do more undercover things against us than you would, it would be startling to understand that there have been those that have manipulated, I mean truly manipulated our lives behind closed doors. And we think, oh no, it's us. It's not us. It's a lot of other hidden shadows that we, have, we haven't been made aware of. But the word of Yahweh is a beautiful word. And there's nothing in it that won't reveal the truth. And it says in Psalm uh, um, 10, and I'm looking for the verse because I want to read this to you. Um, it says, um, Psalm 10, let's start at verse 8. He said it in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places does he what? Murder the innocent. Now, it said thou shalt not kill. So where does murder come in? If you was to go and read it in the Hebrew, it shouldn't be thou shalt not kill, but thou shalt not murder. See, so you can see the flaws just by reading this and knowing in, uh, in Exodus chapter 20 where it said thou shalt not kill. It should be thou shalt not murder because you can make a mistake and kill somebody. But a murder is an outright plan, a plot, is a deceitful act. So it says in the secret places do he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. Listen to this. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. Do you hear this? See, he does catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. So we can see that these things are done secretly. These things are not done openly. This is why I'm telling you about the pertinent information that must be dropped on you. So you'll know how do you maneuver past all this deceitfulness. And there's a lot of deceitfulness. But see, it says, and, 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 the, and, and the writings tell you everything that's on the wicked man's mind. Because see, he can't do nothing else but wrong. But see, let us get what belongs to us. And I keep emphasizing that because it's very important. Because I know, not believe, we are a great people. And we got to begin to know this. Not just saying it, but know it. And show proof. Now, Yahweh in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6, Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. So do we have our wisdom? Do we have our understanding? So it says, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this is a great nation, is wise and understanding people. They can't say that about us. Because see, we left our wisdom and our understanding. They looking at us and said, man, these are foolish people. See, so to turn it around, let us go back and understand what makes us have our wisdom. You know it says, get ye wisdom, get ye knowledge, but most of all, get ye understanding. So, for what nation is there so great who has Allah so nigh unto them, as Yahweh our God is in all things that we call upon him for? So this is what makes us great. We, to be obedient, to know what strengthens us. Then we can pass this to our children and know that our children will stand. But see, we can't give nothing to our children if we haven't first given it to ourselves. See, because as it says, what happened to Jacob Let's go to Psalm 
147. See, Yahweh gave us a great thing, but we threw it away. Um, chapter 147, verse 19 to 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye, Yahweh. Now with Yahweh, we know that God created all men. All men have been created by him. So when he said he's not de dealt so with any other nation, what he meant was he never became personal with nobody other than him. He, said, he says, Israel, out of all the families of the earth, I've only known you. He didn't say he didn't only create it. He said, I've only known you. I've only gotten personal with you. So he's given us a, 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 something that's royal. That no other nation could ever say that they had a contact with God. What nation can tell you that they had a contact with God? I don't know who. But he says in Amos chapter 3 verse 2. You only have I knew, known of all the families of the earth. And Yahweh was making that totally clear. Unless we get the information that pertained to us, we will not survive what is coming down on this planet. We will not be able to make it. So it's important to collect and understand what Yahweh was talking about. So let us go to Jeremiah uh, uh, and... And, and, and see how can we, where can we get this information because see, Yahweh is a great God and he has not left us in darkness. We desire to be in darkness. See, it's easy to get the people to buy the lie and it's hard to get them to buy the truth. It's I mean, you could sell them any misinformation, but tell them they're great and they'll fight you and tell you no. Tell them they ain't nothing and they'll go along with that. Why? Because he says man judges from the outer. And this is what we have to learn that even in the book of Proverbs it said lean not upon thy own understanding. See, it said man judges from the outer, but Yahweh judges from the inner. And we have to learn that what we might see, we might see poverty around us. You understand? Riches does not make a man right with God. Poverty don't make a man right with God. You understand what I'm saying? You can be rich, you can't say that God hates you or love you. You can, you can be poor and you can't say God hates you or love you. You got to stop looking at the physical thing and making a statement, well, um, Yahweh's not with me. That's not true. You don't know. Don't look at the state because, believe me, the devil gives very precious gifts to those that he will destroy because he knows that they'll take their attention. You know, if anybody, uh, if, a, if a poor person will praise God and build churches, how much more a man that's rich and has money, he should be serving God more than the individual that don't have. Because unless he has, he has said to himself, well, this is what I've done. Because Yahweh says, I made the poor and I made the rich. You're not poor because you want to be poor and he ain't rich because he want to be rich. He's rich or poor because that's the state in which God has put you in for his own reason. Now, if you want to find the reason, because I don't think it's too many rich people asking why they're, they're rich. But if the black American come here and ask God, well, why am I poor? Because, see, there's a, we're not poor because of a lack of money. We're poor for... Uh, for the lack of a state of mind of who we are. See, it is the spirit. If the spirit is with you, you can live in a shack. And that shack 
will shine like a diamond. And if the spirit ain't with you, you can live in the most glamorous place and it's dull. You know, it, because what gives things existence, it is the spirit that abides within you that emanates. If you are wicked, deformed, ruthless person, you'll find out if you only deal with material things, then eventually when those material things are left, you're only going to have you. And if what is in you is corrupt, then you won't have no peace. That's why they can't go in the grave and lie down and rest because they have done so much evil mischief upon the earth. Then when it comes to time, because see, death is acceptable to the body because the body's tired and the body goes to rest and the soul, you understand, goes to rest because it has been moving through the physical plane for many years. And there are certain governing laws that when it's time to leave, the body goes back and it rests. It goes back into the elements it came from. But at the same time, this, the, the, the spirit within the soul, which is the body, it has received all of the information that you learn through your pilgrimage in the physical world. So if your pilgrimage in the physical world has been corrupt, defiled, if it has been through abomination, you carry it in the spirit, the Ruach. See, so you automatically are building up your hell or your heaven. It's within you. So let us take hold of the law and learn beyond a shadow of a doubt that your is in love with us. So let's go to Jeremiah uh, um, chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, it says, To whom shall I speak and give warning, that they may hear, behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of Yahweh is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. See, so... If we're going to get information, it's going to be from the word of Yahweh. But if the word is a reproach to them, how can they get the information? He said he showed this word unto Jacob. You understand? But if the word is a reproach unto them, how can they come back to their stately position in the earth if they cannot deal with the word of Yahweh? Because you can't, uh, 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 you cannot. Get it no other way. It says there should be a famine in the land, not for bread nor water, but what? For hearing the word. And if that word is a reproach, then how are you going to hear it? How would you be able to know and move through this? You can't. So let's go to Jeremiah 17 because uh, verse 15, Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of Yahweh? Let it come now. Now these are those that are conscious that it's through the word of Yahweh, through the passing of this information, that we can be healed. But we cannot be healed if we find the word of our God of reproach. The moment a man or a woman begins to keep the Shabbat. The, lo the moment an individual begins to keep the issue law and become conscious of the dietary law and become conscious of his God and who, then the word begins to heal because he begins to read and begins, as he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of your house. So now you got your nourishment. You got what you're supposed to do. So why don't you in, put it and enact it in your life so that you can reap the benefits? Because see, one thing about your house, your house has created this whole universe by his word. If you can get past your house's word, <laughs> you got to be got to be something extra special, extra extraordinary. But see, 
In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29, it says, Is not my word like a fire, said Yahweh, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces? So, it is the word of our God that is permeating this great and awesome creation. And he's passing the information that we should be conscious about. You understand? Yahweh's making totally, he's telling you, believe me. And I beg that you should listen to the word of your house because there's nothing you can do against his word because he's, he's giving you the information. He says uh, uh, in, in Isaiah chapter um, 55, uh, verse um, 10, it says to verse 11, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and return it not thither, but water the earth and make it it bringeth forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. So if we want the superior information, we have to get it from your house. See? Don't worry about man. Man cannot help himself. He cannot decree whether there's going to be rain, snow. He cannot pass any le legislature that, that will give him power over any of the elements on this planet. That's right. He can't tell you that it's going to rain tomorrow because it don't have to rain. He can look at all the cloud formation. It's all up to Yahweh. Yahweh is ruler. And anybody that don't believe that Yahweh is ruler, they are a fool. He is ruler. You know, and you want to know who is running the whole show. Yes, Yahweh wants you to respect authority because when you keep Torah, that's all law is about. Rules and regulation and authority. Those that are in authority that, that enforce rules and regulation to, to honesty, you should respect him. You shouldn't be mad at an officer that is governing because of his color. Look at the service he's doing. Forget about color. Look at the service he's doing. See, he is, he is doing what we should have done when we were in power. We should have kept the law and we should have enforced the law first among ourselves. And then we would have imposed at the restrictions of law into all those that was in our vicinity. But since we double-crossed ourselves, the world has double-crossed us because we've made ourselves a victim, a casualty, by breaking the law, consciously and unconsciously. But we got to a point where that which made us became a burden. How could anything that you're about, that puts the bread and butter on the table to feed your family, you dislike. How could we dislike Yahweh who fed us? We weren't no warring people of our own nature. You understand? We, when we came out of Egypt, we were helpless. And it was due to the spirit of Yahweh and his greatness that he showed governing ship over all the face of the earth because he did his will upon one of the most greatest civilizations at that time. He had, he did his will because he wanted to show you as he said, I married unto Israel. He wanted to show you how much he loved you and his authority and rulership. He went into a nation that afflicted you for no reason and he laid that civilization down to its foundation. Should we not love Yahweh? Should we not, for his testimony that he has given us, should we not find all love in our heart to understand what he did for us, that we did not demand that he did it? He did it. Because he's telling us, come and partake at this table. Come and be with me because I love you. 
It's hard to convince someone you love them if you don't do nothing for them. It's kind of hard for a husband to tell a wife that he loves her and he goes to work and he abuses his paycheck and then set out on the sidewalk. That, that woman hesitate in giving her e true emotional feeling for a man that does not adequately do the very best he can. Because see, when a man does the best he can and he is on top of what he can be on top of, a woman that doesn't see this is a woman that is short-sighted. But a woman that can see that that man goes and makes a penny and he brings it home and that he provides to this best of ability for his children, that is a great, and I do say a great, great man. That's right. Because we can, any, any of us can provide what we have. It's hard to provide, provide when we don't have. But if you would take the opportunity of using what you do have, and though anybody scorn you, the thing about it, it is the judgment of your Howard that will stand. And the judgment of your Howard is fear and righteous. So I tell any man, any woman, do the very, very, very best. And in doing the very, very best, your Howard will promote you in that he will give you the confidence, he will give you the stamina, he will give you the strength.